in the summer of 2014, a group few had heard of burst onto the world stage and into global consciousness forever. In a matter of weeks, the ultra-violent jihadist group calling itself Islamic State in Iraq and Syria, or ISIS, began overrunning huge swathes of both countries. But it was this moment, in June of that year, that the leader of ISIS, Abu Bakr al-Baghdadi, announced the establishment of a global caliphate to rule all Muslim territories, saying he would conquer Christian lands. A clear signal ISIS intended to take its barbaric methods to the West. Thousands of young Westerners, including dozens of British Muslims, flocked to join them. Most notorious of all ISIS foreign jihadis were a group of sadistic executioners who were British. Known by their captors as the Beatles, they were led by Mohammed Mwazi. I'm back, Obama, and I'm back because of your arrogant foreign policy towards the Islamic State. He carried out the first sickening beheadings of Western hostages. In September 2014, British aid worker David Haynes was murdered by ISIS and a horrific video of his execution was released. The following month, another British aid worker, Alan Henning, was similarly murdered. Mohammed Mwazi was involved in both their deaths. He himself would later be killed in an Allied airstrike. ISIS established its so-called caliphate in the Syrian city of Raqqa, which it captured. The city became the symbol of its totalitarian and bloody rule. Pictures of life under ISIS in Raqqa were extremely rare, but from its headquarters, it took over huge swathes of Syria. In December 2015, the UK Parliament voted to launch airstrikes on ISIS in Syria. They are hijacking the peaceful religion of Islam for their warped ends. Within hours of the vote, RAF jets were taking off from Cyprus and the first targets were hit. Many other countries joined the air campaign against the group. On the ground, ISIS was pushed from all sides. Mosul, where the caliphate was launched, fell in 2017 to Iraqi forces. Then Kurdish armor drove through the very square in the Syrian city of Raqqa that ISIS tanks once paraded. The caliphate, geographically at least, was crumbling. The desolate and bleak village of Baghouz in Syria is where ISIS made its last stand. The wives and children of the group's last and most extremist followers, including thousands of foreign fighters, giving themselves up. The immediate challenge is whether they should be allowed back to Britain and the other Western countries they left in order to join ISIS. Those that need to be put in prison should be returned to their countries of origin and put in prison. And those that we think can be de-radicalized need to be de-radicalized. Just leaving them there to fester, taking their passports away, all you're doing is, is planting the seeds of a very hardcore next generation. It would be foolish to think ISIS has been destroyed. It hasn't. And in the West, those who follow its ideology and who carried out countless mass murders in its name, like the Bataclan nightclub in Paris and the Manchester Arena bombing, have not abandoned their allegiance to the group and its hateful ideals. Ragi Omar, ITV News.